The Overwatch heroes are, are the aspect that keep me engaged in the entire Overwatch lore, with new heroes being added every once in a while. But another area that inspires me is the game modes, seasons, and events. Welcome to Watchcraft, where we talk about ideas for heroes, game modes, seasons, and events that could come to Overwatch in the future. I'm your host, BB8 from BB8's house as always. Let's get into it, up next. Hey there YouTube lovers. Welcome to Watchcraft episode three. It's been a while since we've done a Watchcraft episode. So I thought, it's been since December. So I thought, let's get back to Watchcraft. And this time, we're not doing a hero. We're actually covering a new mode this time. And what is that new mode? Zomnix. Because I always have been interested in zombies modes in shooting games. So I thought, why not come up with my own take on a zombies mode for Overwatch 2 called Zomnix? I know that Junkenstein's Revenge exists, but this is different from Junkenstein's Revenge. Meaning that this is one that you can access at any time. Unlike Junkenstein's Revenge, which you can only get access to around Halloween. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? For the overview, the PvE game mode called Zomnix would offer a unique take on the Overwatch 2 experience. It combines cooperative gameplay with survival mechanics to provide a refreshing twist on the game. Although developed independently from Blizzard, the mode would be integrated into Overwatch 2. Similar to how Fortnite has had new experiences developed by other studios like LEGO Fortnite developed by the LEGO Group, Rocket Racing developed by Psyonix, and Fortnite Festival developed by Harmonix. Although I don't think Overwatch 2 will become a metaverse scale game. I think collaborating with other studios for new modes and experiences, I think could add a bit more value to the game that we already have. For the gameplay in Overwatch 2 Zomnix, players could engage in a permanent PvE survival mode within Zomnix. Unlike typical wave-based combat from Junkenstein's Revenge or the Hero Gauntlet within Hero Mastery. This mode focuses more on survival-based missions, where players can face a constant onslaught of zombie-like enemies known as Zomnix. But the variety of Zomnix enemies will be developed with Zomnix. Players would have the option to tackle these missions alone or team up with a group of four players for better cooperation and strategic gameplay. For the menu interface, the Zomnix menu would be called the Survivor Base, which acts as the hub for players to manage their unlocked heroes and select missions. The hub could resemble a fortified outpost amidst the post-apocalyptic landscape, with various interactive elements and NPC survivors. There is something I am going to implement into this pitch called Adaptable Difficulty, where players can face Zomnic attacks on their own or form a team of up to four members, like I just said within the gameplay section. But the game would adjust the difficulty level dynamically based on the chosen mode and the number of players in the group. Because the one problem I've had with playing PvE missions alone is that it's always difficult. And I do think adapting Zomnix for offline play can actually make Overwatch 2 accessible no matter where you are. So if you're playing it on Nintendo Switch or Steam Deck, this could actually be like one of the first offline modes that would be playable within the game. This would ensure that all players have a balanced and engaging experience with the right level of tension. For the mission structure, Blizzard would release six new missions per season in Zombies. These missions could, with unique 
objectives, environments and rewards. After the season ends, players would still be able to access these missions permanently. This ensures that players can revisit their favourite encounters and continue their journey against the Omnic Threat. For the Endless Mode, Zomnix would also offer an Endless Mode for those who are looking for the ultimate test of endurance. This mode, players face a never-ending wave of enemies, and survival against increasingly overwhelming odds becomes the ultimate measure of skill and teamwork. The leaderboard rankings showcase the most resilient survivors. For the hero selection, at the start of Zomnix, players will only have access to a limited number of heroes to choose from. This is intentional to prevent the game from being too easy. However, as players progress through the Zomnix mode and complete objectives, they will unlock additional heroes to use in future missions. This progression system does add an extra layer of strategy to the game as players experiment with different hero combinations to complete each mission. The first three heroes available would be Soldier 76 would have a versatile kit with a rifle and field, great for beginners. Reinhardt would wield his iconic hammer and barrier, strong for both offense and defense, and Kiriko would use her ninja and kunai's and stealth and would excel at precision takedowns meaning heroes such as diva even though she's one of my favorites would be one of the last that you'd unlock within zomnix because she is a bit too op to be a beginner hero within zomnix for cross-platform saving players can play zomnix offline but an internet connection is required for cross-platform save functionality. So if you're playing out the house on Nintendo Switch, cross-platform save would not work unless you're connected to the internet. This feature allows players to seamlessly switch between platforms while retaining their progress, encouraging engagement across various devices. Players can also earn cosmetic rewards by completing various missions in Zomnix mode, as these cosmetics are not only applicable within Zomnix, can, but can also be utilized in Overwatch 2 as well, adding value and incentive for players to engage within the mode. But how would this mode be accessible though? The Zomnix mode would be available for purchase at a price of $19.99 or £17.99 in UK money, providing players with permanent access to an immersive survival world. Users who are subscribed to Overwatch Plus could enjoy the mode at no extra cost, but if their subscription is cancelled, they would lose access to Zomnix mode. Similar to the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass in a way, and it would be worth noting that the game does not include microtransactions. Ensuring that Zomnix mode has a fair experience, microtransactions will be excluded from this mode. So guys, what did you think of Watchcraft Episode 3 being Zomnix? I am going to start doing more Watchcraft episodes as the months go by, but we're probably not going to get one now until May. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one. And I will see you all in a future Watchcraft episode. BB-8 out.